This series of tapes, Psychology vs. Theology, were recorded from classes given this year by our Supreme Grand Master, Dr. Malachi Zior, known to us as Naya Malachi Zodok El, our own Pharaoh, Amanubi Ruachatol. These tapes were released in part so that you may listen and learn the profound facts as taught by the man of this hour. And now, listen to the dynamic teachings of the Supreme Grand Master, Naya Malachi Zodok El. For the first time, right. the first time this country hears about Hellbox and the possibility of some craft coming out the sky, and then what they do? They panic. They start crying on the radio. Oh my God, something's coming. <laughs> what God are you talking about? What God are you talking about? But according to what I've read in the Bible, oh my God, would be Revelation 21. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what it's saying. Oh, it's right here. Look at that. Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven. That is a new heaven, a new above. And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. And there was no sea. So if, let's be close, your God, this is again, is in our heaven, one more time. Right now. He's right now. If he's in the heaven right now and has been in heaven for 2,000 years, what Jesus said in Matthew 24, our Father who art in heaven, his heaven, according to this Bible, is going to be wiped away. That's what the Bible says. Tell us how can God's heaven be wiped away. But it says here, and I saw a new heaven, that is the old heaven, right. and a new earth, that is the old earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Mm. Now they can go mystical on me, they can go metaphysical on me, <laughs> they can have some terrorist on me. But the word of God, if you said you believe in. And I should take literally when you think I should. I want to take literally right now. All right. Now, I don't want you to add nothing to it, Jimmy. Swagger. I don't want you to start saying this is a mystical city. Or this is a heaven. I want you to say it right here. You sit there, heaven and earth are gone and the sea too. What will we be standing on? Right. Unless somebody or somebody is coming to take us out of here while that dispensation takes place. While that change takes place. Well, not all of us, unfortunately, it said many are called a few are chosen. A few are chosen. 144,000, get back to biblical again. Keep on asking about 144,000, that's biblical stuff again. It's about you and written about you, but it's still a biblical doctrine. And you go back before that. You better try to find out what the Egyptians or what the Hopi or what the Washington said when the ancient ones come. That's where the Bible got it from. Let's stay here. Verse number two. And I, John, this is John, uh, Bar of Zebedee, son of Zebedee, saw, listen, the holy city, New Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem. New Jerusalem, doing what, y'all? Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So the city is not Jesus, the good ship Jesus. But Jesus is not a her. Jesus is a he. And the Bible says, prepared, what? Adorned for her husband. Then what is that? What else is it? And I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Now, a crack in the form of a whole city is coming down out of heaven from God, according to Revelation 21. And then I heard a voice. John, I heard somebody speak. If there was John, was having a vision. Is it true or not? Is the vision true or not? He was an out of the in prison, and he was having his vision. This evangelistic message. Is it true or not? Don't start talking. It's a dream to throw people off. Is it true? Is it, should I believe it? 
Now, if I should believe it, I start reading it. If you want to now say don't believe it because I'm reading it, it makes sense to me and not to you, then I'll just shut up. And I'll go on to do what I do best. You follow? But if you want to say the Bible is true, and not one dot, no one fiddle shall be removed from this until the Lord made, then it's me. And let's see what it says without Jimmy swaggering it somewhere else. <laughs> then just see what it says for the word. And whether we believe it or not, let's see it. Let's see if it makes sense for us today and how it applies to us. One thing is for sure, whatever heaven you believe in, it just said it was going to be gone. Your heaven is gone. There's a new one here. As it says, it says a whole city is coming down out of heaven. A city. Can I stay here for a minute? Yeah. What is a city? Yeah. We can call it a ship, we can call it a mirror, we can call it hell, we can call it anymore. The Bible says a city is coming out of heaven from God. And that people should be ready. Christians ain't saying that. I want to know why. I want to know why I've never heard no Christian preacher say a city is coming out of heaven. You know why? Because in this country, if you say that, they'll call you a cult and say you crazy. All them people are some cult. They believe this job. They're coming out of heaven. I believe all of us came down from heaven. Didn't you read your book, St. John chapter 1? The same light that lighteth every man that do what? Cometh into the world. So you came from someplace here, right in St. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And there was not anything made that was made without Him. In Him is the light. And the life is the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness comprehends it not. Right. The Spirit of God came from heaven down into you. Now, if something comes from out of there, up in heaven, down, it's an extraterrestrial. <laughs> That's all. Ain't nothing heaven. If it came from heaven down, and it's in you, and Muslims say Allah breathes in you the breath of life, he said, came down in the night as a spirit. To descend down to the Muslim Came down. Jesus said, what? Our Father who art. This is how I want you to pray. I don't want you to pray our Father who's on earth. I want you to pray our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But I'm the manifestation, he said, of the Father on earth. But when you see me, you see Father. What was he saying? That God can have human representation. Human beings that represent God on earth. That's what he said. When you see me, you see the Father. Why? Why don't the preacher preach this? Why are you talking a bunch of garbage? Tell me about things that have nothing to do with me. Has nothing to do with the day and time. I'll tell you why. So when his best light took place in the sky a couple of months ago, and you can still see that great star that Revelation talks about that could strike this earth. That one would have taken a, uh, what they call it, a uh, hellbox has taken a turn since they shot at it. It was moving that way, now it's moving this way. You look at it, you stay out here at night, you see it clear right there. We watch it. It's coming this way now. Something to worry about for somebody. <laughs> Not for those prepared for the rapture. Right. Not for those that have a personal relationship with the Son of God. Right. You call that Son of God by the Greek name Jesus or Jesus, or by the Arabic name Isa, or by the Hebrew name Yeshua, or by the Sumerian name Tammuz. Or by the Egyptian name, Horus or Hor. Regardless of what name you want to call him in and what language did the Almighty split your tongues up in Genesis, still the same person. Still the Son of God. Still coming for his people. Coming in the flesh for you. I'm not Jesus. Don't start that. I cannot fit the shoes of Jesus. Ah, no. Jesus is the greatest thing that could happen to you. Oh. It tells you right there, then I thought, we'll get down to it. Then you see I'm here, so I can't be put the cover there. Gotta be careful, gotta be careful, you know that. It says in number three, and I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God. 
Holy Tabernacle. The Tabernacle of God is Lord, with man. man. See, the Holy Tabernacle must be set up first. Right, not the church. Right. Not the temple, not the lodge, not the mosque, not the synagogue. It tells you. The Tabernacle. The Hekai. That's the Hebrew word for it. Hekai. So it's not synagogue. It says right there, the Tabernacle of what? Of God is with man. Instead of on earth. And he will dwell with them. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them. And be their God. Right. Yeah. Free Grandmaster. That doesn't need a heavenly father. Ooh, yeah. That needs his son. Right. Jesus is still yet to come in the first. I gotta keep going. Right. 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 And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow or crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things, past things, they have gone away. The suffering is gone. We are conscious now. Our ancestors are moving through us. The spirits of God. The Elishi, if you want to be Yoruba. The Kachina, if you want to be Native American. The Malaika, if you want to be Muslim. Are moving through us. I'm not going to stand next to me. Are moving through us now. Are affecting the world now. And it's altering rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes now. Now. Are bringing planes out the sky. Right now. But it's none of that bothering you. And none of it touching you. Uh, they are getting abducted, yeah. and none of it touching you. Ain't nobody bothering you. In fact, I know a whole bunch of colored folks. That's what you like to call yourself. I don't know how many colors you are. <laughs> Boy, they to be a uh, pop. How come you know blacks don't get abducted? It's <laughs> always back with country folks out in the woods. You know, and they have done. Why don't they have done? You are telling me you want to be abducted? Or that you want to be up getting? Let me say, you want a bunch of little gray men feeling on you? Great on you? Is that what you want? You want to lay in your bed, little gray man with big head coming to float you out through the ceiling? And then you got to come back to earth and explain that to people? And some people cry. Yeah. Confirmed, and as you convince that you know it, when all you were doing 
Well, we're in a day and time now where we're starting to know things. Mm -hmm. They hooked up that computer and gave us the computer and people are faxing things from all over the world saying, guess what, you know, this is y'all over here. Well, who faxed it? I don't know who sent it in. I don't know who sent me that big old stuff. Mm -hmm. But someone said, you know, I read in that holy tablet that you say that there was a group of people on the planet with that big old double skull. Something like the nation of Islam said. Now why? I ask you why. In all the years of nation of Islam existed, why did somebody send them that skull? Right. They were saying, man, they named Yaqub with the head of scientists, the head of the scientists, right? Why didn't they send it to them? Why did they send it to wait to us to come along? Why didn't they see about the Jews and the Chibos? How come they didn't tell them about the Jews? I said, you know, the big people that have a trunk like, like an elephant. I've seen these, see these creatures in underwater. You go like that, you go, uh-huh. <laughs> now you go to China and they have a deity called the Ganush. Then they put in all the books in America now. Statues of a big old fat elephant looking man with four fingers, no teeth, and a big trunk. And it's one of them deities called Ganush. A view comes to the eye. Then they say, oh, we found a bunch of skull bones with these elongated heads. Not going back like Egyptians are going up. Till. <laughs> when the impossible is made to look possible. Mm. When the irrealities are made to look real. Mm. But when you first met it, you had to believe it. But now you see it, so you know it. Mm. That's how the ancient ones feel. Mm. They manifest things for you. They make things happen for you. When you get up in the morning with the sun, and you tell the ancient ones, as your ancestors, your blood, your sweat, and your tears, the centuries that you existed on the planet, that guide you, all the souls of all your ancestors who have passed before you, they guide you to the world. Don't tell me about no true God that you can't confirm. Tell me about no Allah out there ways, and you say in heaven out there ways that you say up there out there how far, you say just far. <laughs> Don't tell me about nothing that can't be cut. I can touch myself. And in touching me, I touch my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my great-grandfather. I touch all of us. And if everybody has souls, and souls don't die, then all of them are alive somewhere. But I've been told, don't contact them. That's some form of witchcraft. That's some form of paganism. But sit around and idolize the image of St. Germain, given by the Confederate sisters, to the Christians in Africa, and Asia, and America, and that's his image, and that's God. I'm going to look there, here I am black as night, looking at a white man on the wall, and trying to link my soul to his. I'm in, the, in the church singing the gospel, singing my heart out. And if they could take that boy off the wall, he couldn't sing a lick. <laughs> And he thought he wouldn't be singing what I'm singing. I'm singing to God, and God can't understand soul music. Because he's an old Jew. <laughs> and you get mad when I say that. But when you look at the statues in Egypt that look like me, and say, that paganism, I'm going to tolerate that crap. When you look at the Babylonian deities and say, that paganism, and the African statues of the Yoruba, Shango, Obatala, Obu, and Yenaya, our ancestors, and I look at them and call them my God, you call me a pagan. But you want me to believe in a man who came down to earth and other men beat him up, nailed him on a cross, killed his butt dead, <laughs> and then you're telling me he's my savior. Well, who the hell is his thing? <laughs> he didn't do it up or put up God to save himself.
integrity. My God, my God, why hast thou left me? So Jesus was calling out, oh God, help me. <laughs> now I'm walking next to you and you my Savior and you're saying, oh God, help me. <laughs> They have not found Sodom and Gomorrah. They have not found the ark. 
No, the mountain that he landed on. They had no proof of this. They had no proof that there was a Goliath. They had no Christian, Muslim, or Jew to tell you exactly where Adam was born. Exactly. Where was Adam born or created? Exactly where was Eve made, crafted, born, or created? Exactly where and exactly when. Christians cannot tell you exactly when Jesus was born. Exactly. Exactly where? They got no reference there on in a manger. Where? They <laughs> <laughs> say, well, Jesus is a Nazareth. But if they were born in Bethlehem, Bethlehem is not Nazareth. Now, if he was born in Bethlehem, he was Bethlehemian, not a Nazareth. Unless he was a Nazareth who came and moved and lived in Bethlehem. But according to the Bible, it says literally, he went from Nazareth so that the prophecy would be fulfilled. What? Ain't that what it says? So what does that mean? That he wasn't that prophecy. It's a prophecy. It's a prophecy says that Jesus is going to be born in Stone Mountain in Atlanta. You got that? And Jesus is born in Smyrna. And then goes to Stone Mountain in Atlanta. That prophecy does not fulfill to him. If it says a Nazarite shall be born, and he was born in Bethlehem, hello, <laughs> wrong man. They might have missed the real Messiah, born in Nazareth, while taken up under the one born in. And I tell you, and I've proven it to you, that there's more than one Jesus in this Bible. <laughs> Three of them existed at the same time, and Christians don't even tell you about one. So the Bible tells you about Jesus Justice and Simon, or, or, or a man called Bar Jesus, which means Son of Jesus. All this is been saying that. In fact, Jesus decided once approached him and said, You know there's a man out there teaching in your name. And that's in the Bible. And Jesus said, Well, as long as you teach in my name, it's okay. <laughs> now, if you came to me and said, You know, Dr. God, out there teaching in your name, I said, What do you mean by that? When he's saying he's you. Oh, I said, oh, well, I'd like to meet him. Yeah. One of you better meet him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but I wouldn't just say, oh, that's okay. Because uh, I don't know what crime is going to commit in my name. Uh, now, we're going to find out in the book of Acts that this bar Jesus did commit crimes. Uh, he called him a Jew, a sorcerer, and a liar. Uh, and a wine, and an alcoholic. That's right. <laughs> and that wasn't the real Jesus. See, the problem people have when you talk about Jesus, they don't ask you, who are you talking about? Like well, I can storm off and I have murdered and talk about Jesus and quote the Bible, you swear to God, I'm talking about your Jesus. Yeah. I'm only talking about your Jesus if you've been psyched into the fall of Jesus in Matthew 24 says, many of them come in my name and say they're Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fake Christ out here. That white boy on that wall is not Jesus, but Revelation described Jesus having hair like a wall and feet like burnt glass or even burning furniture. I ain't even searched yet with niggas standing on the wall. <laughs> 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 Jesus is somebody who's telling you, if that picture's on the wall in your church and your Revelation addressing the fact that Revelation describes Jesus, then you better realize they're giving you the wrong Jesus. Right. They're giving you the anti-Christ to worship. You're worshiping the image of the beast. Right. And it tells you in the book of Revelation chapter 13 that he's going to deceive many. He's going to trick you and tell them how to watch out for him. He's looking for some old red creature to come out with horns. That's mythology. I got a name for those people. They're called mythologians. <laughs> mythologians are Muslims. Christians and Jews who want mythology over facts. When you say Jesus is a person that's in history, then that's a fact. Present the fact. And if you can't present the fact, then it goes in the trash can or in the mythology group. Whether you like it or not, history and time is proving you wrong. It's being revealed that what you were taught is just not true. The Dead Sea Scrolls have revealed the Quran Diamond that the Bible you hold is not the Bible. If someone put this together to deceive you, and you crying and weeping, oh God, oh Lord Jesus, and wondering why you ain't getting no answer. Wondering why you ain't getting the bills paid. 
Why are you running to the air when you die in the hospital? Why are you praying with the Bible? You throw the Bible on top of the most of the Or the Quran. I've seen it while in an Islamic country that's in the same ignorance as you have here. A God that don't help you. Until you die. They got to convince you that God will help you when you die. Listen, let me go a little more in here. Revelation. It says, And God shall wipe away the tears, shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Let me read five again. So you catch something. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Where is he? <laughs> read the Bible. Read it close. He ain't there no more. <laughs> He ain't sitting on the throne in heaven. And those are things that we got to ask you where God is. He he's in heaven. The Bible said he left. <laughs> the Bible says he who sat upon the throne. He's not there. He's praying to nothing. He's taking your prayers to nobody. Now you better find out where God is. <laughs> That's why you ain't getting no help. Because you pray to an empty seat. <laughs> I ain't making this up. That's what he said. I'm just being. And he that sat, 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 upon the throne, upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Now, is your religion the new religion or the old religion? I want to go back with you. I want to, I want to go back with you. I don't want to get a chance to play games. I want to ask you a question. Is the Christianity religion old? Oh. <laughs> 2,000 years, Islam, 1,400 years, Judaism over 5,000 years, 1,000, 1,000, 1,400 years, 1, 1, is so baby. Give me that old time religion. <laughs> Give me that old time religion, right? right? Now the answer is yes. God says, making all things new. I'm asking you, is your religion new or old? Oh. So is your religion the religion of God? No. Not Judaism, Christianity, Islam, not the religion that God is bringing. He said he's making something new for you. He's making up a new pot of two here. Something new, not the old way. That's what the Bible says. I'm not making this up. Go home and read it yourself. And I read Greek. And you ain't talking no fool. Yes, ma'am.
And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, talking to God, right, for these words are true. God told me it's true words. And faithful. You can put your faith in this, that there's going to be a new religion in the end. Not an old religion. Not Christianity, not Judaism, and none of that. That ain't getting you out of here. You walk forward, new. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new religion. Yeah. It is done. Sign the singer. Kaboom. <laughs> God said, it is done. You understand? I already know what's going to happen in the future. He said, it's done. It's over. That old stuff got to go. It didn't serve you well. New stuff is coming. Then they picked up again. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of life free. You know what I'm saying? He said, if you want it and you want to drink, you come drink out. Right. You want to stay back in the old time religion? You stay back in that silliness and spookism? Worshiping God and you get it? But my ancestors are working here in Georgia. Mm. Right. My ancestors are working in Louisiana. Mm. And they're working all over Africa now. Mm. See, Africa got sent back because they started giving themselves over to the white people. Mm. Started listening to his way of life, following his customs, following his tradition, right. listening to his music, seeing his women as beautiful, not our own. Mm. Seeing his friends as beautiful, not our own. Mm. Want his stuff. Living in the image of these. Like that, man. Taking on his image. Right. Acting oh. like it. Straightening our hair. Waving oh. our faces. Changing our noses. Michael Jackson in it. But we didn't just do that. We changed our own hearts. We look at Africa. I ain't no African. I ain't no Native American. I don't really know who can boogaloo. That's what y'all said about us. Y'all know who the Buddha is. I'm from Africa. I was born in Africa. Y'all know who the Buddha is. I keep thinking they have a bigger list than me. From America. I'm serious. I keep thinking from America. Thank <laughs> you. 
your face. Because God was in darkness before he said, let there be light. If God said, 